This is your demo under 20. And this is all about how to create a shadow in stained glass mosaic. And I, um, this is it takes a lot longer than 20 minutes to create this um, image and this project. So I've gone ahead and done a little bit ahead of time, but I wanna talk about what's sitting here in front of me. So basically I just wanna do a very basic design. And obviously this is a sea turtle and the sun is shining this way down on the turtle. And here are our shadow marks. So I've put the glass in for the turtle, very basic. I've been using white thin set on a wetty board that I did a scratch coat of white on just so everything was white and you can really see what's happening here. Now the glass choices are what's really important. So for the turtle, obviously I just wanted to pick something very simple and create um, the image of a turtle. This is not any kind of perfect sea turtle and if I were doing a commission, this would be unacceptable, but it's great for this demonstration. I used my wax paper method for cutting the glass and you can find that in one of the earlier demos under 20 and that's a great way if you wanna learn how to cut the exact size of a piece of glass or shape of a piece of glass to fit in a design. It's a lot of how I did the mermaid, which is on the homepage of Mosaic Arts Online. So my tools were obviously my favorite running pliers, which are dragon, my lepinets, which are my favorite nippers for working in stained glass, and a glass scorer from Toyo, and my cork back ruler. Always have those available when I'm working in stained glass. This is a really great glass. It's Yakagani. It's got some good texture on it, which is what I wanted for the um, legs, fins, and the head. So now let's really quickly talk about what is going to create this shadow effect and what kind of water. Um, it's obviously swimming in water. I'm going to show you how I do my water effect like I've done for the mermaid with this is Paul Wismach's. Uh, it's a turquoise uh, color that I love that's iridized on one side. But then you have to think about what exactly are we going to make the shadows with. You really don't want to use black if your water is a light color. So right here I have brown, dark brown, which I thought maybe that would work up against the turquoise, but it just doesn't feel right to me. It really needs to still be, I think, in the watercolors. If you study some other mosaic artists such as J Gary Drossel and his koi, which is kind of like the go-to for how to do this sort of shadow effect, then he takes a darker glass in the same color as the water. So he uses a light blue and almost white water and then a darker blue for his shadow. So then I started looking at more of a cobalt color and I'm not really a fan of cobalt against the turquoise. It's just never sat right with me. I don't think they go together and I'm not getting to get into color theory and all that right now, but I just wouldn't pick this one. So what I've chosen to go with is this dark purple and it's a Yakagani as well. And what I love about it is all of the striations that and the, you know, wispies that are going through here because we want to create the color, um, the effect of water. And there's a, some of that in this as well with the Wismok. So when I come back, I will have cut these four shadow, these few shadow pieces and we'll talk about laying those in and then what to do, how to make the really the water have that movement so that it looks like the turtle is swimming, but that the light is really shining down from here. Now we're back and as you can see, it looks like the turtle has some shadow uh, the way he's swimming or she's swimming. And that was again, just created by using an image and then I like using my wax paper technique, like I said, cause it really just gets the shapes cut the way I want them. Some of them I did hand cut, just found the shape, used my Sharpie right over the glass and did it. But the rest of them, like I said, you can go check out my, um, stained glass cutting technique using wax paper. Um, I also wanted to create a little more of the bump effect here that is sort of the bump effect on the turtle. So um, my image um, has a little bit of bumpiness and then there's a little bumpiness there. So anywhere that you find that um, there is just the nuance of a shape on your 
main focal point, what it is, the turtle, you want to translate that into your shadow. So that's why it was important to have this little a notch out, which is very similar to the notch here, and the same thing here, and the same thing there. So while um, you're here with me, I thought I would just adhere these. So I'm using the Mappe um, mortar that is called um, glass and tile adhesive. It's easily found online. Floor and Decor always sells it. If you have one nearby, you can um, go pick it up or they do ship. They're probably them and Lowe's are the easiest way to get um, this exact brand of mortar. But if you like Laticrete, use Laticrete. A lot of people love Laticrete. Um, I go back and forth. I've used Laticrete a lot in my career. But Mappe, what I really like about the Mappe, A, it's a little bit gummier, which I really enjoy. And also it comes in a 10 pound bag. That's the key. So that I don't have to lug um, a 50 pound bag around and hope that I'm gonna use it. And especially nowadays, I don't create as much as I used to. So I'm not going through um, the mortar as fast as I did. So I'm working a little messy right now, just because again, demo under 20, but we will, um, oops, where do you go? It goes this way. Um, I'll clean up before we move on to the water. So the water will be the last part of this and I'll um, demonstrate a little bit in the next section how I create my wave effect. And it's pretty basic, but it seems to really uh, do a good job of, um, just make sure I'm putting this in, did it just flip? Yeah, nope, oh, this way. Hold, stick with me on this little guy. Here it is, it's that way. Um, so the water is, uh, it's great using that glass because it already has a lot of that, like I was saying before, the wave effect where it gives it just a lot of movement comes right out of the glass and then the way I cut it will give it even more. All right, so when we come back, I'll have cleaned up my mortar so you don't see it squeezing out everywhere. And then we'll do a little demonstration of where the water has to go. And actually the water in my image goes a little bit um, in between those two, but not on this side. All right, we'll be back. All right, now we're back. And um, like I said, this is a little bit more of a complicated project to uh, create in 20 minutes but I just wanted to give you a little demonstration. Obviously you can see I've done my water waves. I'm using really big pieces of glass just to um, kind of take up the real estate right now so that it could move along a little quicker. I did have to use some smaller pieces as I went around the turtle and the shadow. But what I do, I'm gonna show you on this piece here, as you can see the water is darker um, on what would be considered the deeper part. And then if the turtle's swimming up, then this is the light. And again, the light is still coming from this way, even though um, we have darker on the bottom and lighter on top, the shadow is still uh, pushing from the light over the turtle that way. And that's what you always wanna consider when you're doing shadows, is where is the light coming from? Obviously in shading, that is super important as well. But for this shadow effect, that is obviously the most important thing um, you're trying to achieve. So I just thought I'd give you a quick demonstration on this messy table, how I do these cuts. And they're very um, sort of random. I, I do like starting with a straight edge here that just saves me time, is that if I do have an edge on my mosaic, then this is gonna be the edge of the glass. And sometimes I draw the lines, as you can see here, sometimes I don't. But the whole idea is that I'm just gonna show you a really quick demonstration. I love to make these waves. And this glass is a little thicker and textured, so it's a little challenging to cut, but let's see if we can get this one um, cut. So I always start on one end. Oh, it went, that was perfect. I was gonna go cut the other end, but it did it for me all the way through. So now what I would do is I would start to work in a piece like this over here. So it has its edge. It does have this edge, but we'll work that out in a second. But I need to make sure I match this line here where this piece is. So how would I do that? So really quickly, let's bring in my handy dandy wax paper. <clears throat> 
and I go on top of the wax paper with my Sharpie on top of the design and I'm going to trace where the glass needs to be cut. And like I said, we already know that we have an edge here. So we're going to use this edge right here. And I need to curve this a tiny bit. So let's see if I can do this on camera. Put up my, um, all right, so this is already a problem for, well, we'll make it work. It's a little too short, but that's okay. We don't need to match up exactly where that is. It's just important that we, this curve is important and that line is important. So we're gonna go on top of the wax paper with the score and I've already slipped a little, but I think it'll still work. And you always wanna go edge to edge when you cut your stained glass. So the first part I wanna cut is here. Now I have this little piece to work with and now I cut that curve and let's see how close we are. Not too bad. So obviously this needs to have my nippers now come in and take that edge off. And that's all I do is I'm constantly adjusting with, but this is the curve I really like the best and that's really important. So sometimes I will um, cut right here and have to create another piece or I can continue to manipulate this piece right here. Let's see what happens. If I take a little bit off at a time. Yeah, and it's starting to fit in. It needs a little more right at that point. You can see that. So you just want them to really snuggle together and have a really nice fitting. And then when this is grouted, it will look better. Now this edge kind of bugs me. So here's a little trick you can do in that situation. Take your score and in a kind of organic line, bust it in half, put it back down. And now you have an interstice here, which looks better than the edge being too far, uh, your piece of glass in too far. So we will, um, I'll, uh, Put some thin set, give it a good, make sure it's setting right. Back buttering is sort of how I have always worked. Again, jiggle just to make sure your mortar is going all over the back side give some adjustments to everything. And that is um, the dark piece. So I would work my way up into lighter as I'm doing this, but I have a lot of glass to choose from. So now this is an already cut curve. So this is lighter. So what would be fun maybe is to bring this piece in and it would be a continuation of that curve and let's see where it would actually look best. So maybe it's something that kind of fits in here and we just fill in with a couple, but it's still giving you that curved effect. So I'm going to be really kind of cowboy this thing here. So having worked with stained glass for many years, it's sort of a uh, intuitive process for me at this point. So what I need to do again, I'm going to actually cut this piece here because it's got a really nice, and as you start getting towards the not having as much um, uh, space, you got less space to fill in, things can start to get a little um, funky with your filling in. So I'm going to have to fill in here. I'm going to have to make a piece here, two pieces here, and one more there. So when we come back, I'll have finished putting all the pieces in and we'll talk about um, what might be my choices if I'm going to grout it. We are back and the demo in under 20, which was hardly 20 minutes, is completed. 
and um, it's one of those things that you want to look at from far away and you will see the perspective of the shadow. Sometimes when you look up really close at these mosaics, you're like, what's up with the purple under the brown uh, tile? But when you look through a camera like I am right now or from a distance, you really uh, get that perspective of the shadow. And that was the idea. And I did do some of my wave water here. I'm really proud of this side. I'm not really proud of this area right here. Um, if I had more time, I'd tear out a few of these, but it's not as bad um, as it could be. What was really important to me is the grain of the glass stayed um, in this direction, the horizontal direction. I didn't want to change that grain. So it took a lot of choosing the right glass so that the grain stayed all in that horizontal direction. So this is your demo in under 20. Go um, check out how to uh, create shadows. Always look where the light is coming from from when you are going to make something like this and it's a great practicing tool to use for all types of realism types of mosaic in stained glass or other uh, mosaic materials.